um, that's set up. And I, I, I'm kind of a floater at our church. I, uh, I just kind of fill in where I'm need, needed. I've done sound and I've done overheads and computer stuff. And even sometimes, and Mark's been there too, um, our, our pastor is a firefighter and he tries to get the Sundays off that he is scheduled to work, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes a trade falls through and we get a call within 12 hours. It's like, sorry guys, uh, would you be able to step in? And so, and that's, that's always a blessing too. And so obviously um, success is pre preparation meets opportunity. And so I don't try to go in completely like, oh gosh, you know, I should, <laughs> I should really try to figure something out. I've always kind of got something that God is working in my heart. But um, so availability really is kind of that combination of having our eyes open and knowing what opportunities we can step into. I mean, because I've, there's a lot of things that I'll never really be able to successfully do because it's just so far out of my wheelhouse. Not to say that God won't throw me in there, not to say that there won't be that opportunity, but I also know that God is, he, he God will, will speak to us. He'll speak to our hearts. And, and the more that we begin to walk with God, you kind of get a sense of where things are going. It, things begin to formulate. Things begin to take shape. We don't always know the specifics. We don't always know the details. But then after a while, God says, I need you to be prepared in this area. He kind of nudges us in certain areas. And I think if we will be obedient, we will be mindful, and we will listen to where and what God is telling us to do, we will find that more and more opportunities will present themselves. And I'm a big proponent proponent too of praying for those for those God intersections, you know, to pray for those divine appointments because God will sometimes I get busy. Sometimes I'm not mindful. Sometimes I'm not available. And so God will will um, remind me, John, why don't you pray for one of those divine appointments? And then before you know it, I'm I'm talking to my bank teller for 20 minutes on that one time <laughs> that I've actually gone into the bank. <laughs> and so in fact it was really neat. Um, I uh, had a little bit of a background in a financial ministry um, here in town, and um, that completely transformed my life because uh, the New Testament actually talks more about finances than it does any other thing. And uh, it's a point of obedience. It's a point of stewardship. Um, and we try to divorce um, our finances from the church because we say that it's mammon. Well, it's not mammon. It's God's resources that have been entrusted to his people to use. And so I won't get off on a tangent on that. But I, I had gone into my bank uh, one day to set up a bunch of sub accounts because that's basically how we do our, our budget is we have a bunch of sub accounts that are specifically just funded for food, for gas, for utilities, for rent and all those different kind of things. And the lady, she was, she was just, and, and this was a banker. <laughs> and she's like, what, what is this? And, and so it gave me an opportunity to just kind of share a little bit of the testimony. I said, at one point in time, I went through bankruptcy. I was paying MasterCard with Visa and Visa with MasterCard and, <laughs> and, and praying that they would raise the limit on my personal line of credit so that I could actually go buy groceries. You know, that was the place that I came from. And one of the biggest points of testimony that I have was when I actually paid off my final credit card and this has been over a decade ago and I closed that account and at that time I had already saved over two thousand dollars in my savings account and the credit limit that I had on my on my MasterCard at that time was only fifteen hundred dollars and the lady said are you sure you want to close your credit card account we'll raise your your uh, your spending limit i said well how high she goes well we could do it to probably 1750 and i said well i have two thousand dollars in the savings account and i and i have much better um borrowing rates when i borrow from me and so <laughs> it was just funny that i that god just through our our normal experience you know and and that wasn't that wasn't fun that was I, I got into bankruptcy because I got let go of a job, which was half my income. And it was right during 2008. And that income was not very easy to replace because they weren't giving away jobs anymore. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on. So um, as far as availability, it's just using the, the substance of our own lives, being aware of how those things that God has taken from a weakness to a strength and how that might be a source and even a rescue um, for someone else that's drowning under those similar circumstances. I'm, I'm taking away a couple things here, John, that, that you've said. Uh, one of them is to make uh, be available. 
and and the other one was to be real and and, and of course what you just filled filled in with here and I, I think you know we have a lot of folks that are asking how well, how do we network how do we do these things in the in whatever place that we're at and uh, you know that's some pretty pretty profound fundamental stuff when you really get down to it absolutely being, being real uh, one of the things that we we kind of touched on as we were, as the Lord brought us together to begin, begin doing what we're do, whatever we're doing here um, was that, that there's there seems to be plenty of high production stuff around I mean, really well produced really highly produced uh, Christian material and and many of and much of it is very good but there seemed to be a, a void in the area of just being real just people being real sitting around having a real conversation. About one of the things we, we try to do every once in a while, even musically, is have a bunch of people come and sit around the living room, you know, just kind of kind of have a good time and enjoy one another and have fun and, and talk about the Lord and, and sing a few songs and things like that. So uh, to me, that was really a, a place to live. That's a place because that's who we are. And uh, instead of just putting on the, you know, putting on some persona and, and trying to try, trying to go with that, and that, that was very real to me. I, Don, you've been, I, Don, you've been, go ahead. Go ahead, John. I was going to say, I think we all desire, and we, you know, it's it's easy for the church to mistake the definition of success for that, that high college, that's, you know, whatever it is that we see, that's, but at, at, at the end of the day, I think the most powerful thing that we can do is know that we're going into a situation prayed up and prepared for God to simply use us, because... Yeah. The, the the best opportunities we can give ourselves is when we have nothing to offer when we're so weak but we're right there in the middle of an opportunity that we we can claim no glory or credit for because we know that if god doesn't move then nothing's going to happen and when we see god move it's more than we could have ever done with a two years worth of preparation and a whole staff of people to support us it's about it's just about life isn't it the life that he gives us. Don, you have a few things to say there. I know you do. You're just looking like either that or you're asleep, brother. <laughs> I, don't just, I just occasionally doze off. I was thinking about what John says. I'm so interested about uh, I love his scripture behind him, uh, the uh, XCD, uh, Ephesians 3.20. And it says God's available and able to do abundantly above all we could ask, think, or imagine. And I've got a very vivid imagination. If he can do more than that, we, you know, he's a pretty good God. I'm t thinking about all that, that John puts his hand to. Ephesians 3.23 says, whatever we do, do it to the glory of God. And and I think that's his attitude. And it's, you know, it just radiates. And I appreciate that, John. Thank you, Don. Yeah, likewise. Stephen, I, I know you're here, but you, our initial conversation about kind of you were trying to initiate some things up in the northern Idaho area. Yes. And I could tell from just talking to you, you had a real heart for doing that. And uh, I just wondered how some of these things that John was relating to really rich. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm interested in talking to him after all this. I'll try to get a hold of you. But I'm trying to put together a, an apologetics website. I've got it started. But it'll be a while before I publish it. I've got a lot of content to put on it and all. And I'm trying to actually develop content that I um, and put it on to the USA.life. That's kind of a start of it. And um, I'm going to talk to my pastor. I'm hoping to get content from him. But uh, it's you say you're a webmaster, so I'm kind of wanting to maybe pick your brain. But... <laughs> Uh, I did have a question here for you, though. You probably mentioned it already. Um, what is the focal point or mission of your X, XCD? I, I might have missed that. Yeah, so XCD, basically, it, it just is, it's about inspiring people to do what they can do in oh, God. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got it. Um, not, not being limited by our own standards or definitions, but really, and, and even as Don had touched on, um, ex when you put these two words together, exceedingly abundantly I'm, I'm i'm a wordsmith that just blows my mind <laughs> because it's it's it really it's you know those words were chosen specifically those those were not a mistake and god says here's here's the limits there's no limits 
when you partner with me, when we are walking in the will of God and we all know when it's of us. And I, and I even joke around a lot. It's like, I keep praying to win the lottery and to win my Lamborghini. It have it hasn't happened as of yet, but I'm not going to quit, you know, cause who knows, maybe there's people that drive Lamborghinis that need to be witness to, you know, <laughs> so, what are you using? How are you um, channeling that to inspire? What are, what are, exactly are you using to inspire um, so people? The, the channel really is is a way to kind of showcase a lot of different facets of my personality. Um, as oh. Mark said, I've done some comedy in the past. I post oh, okay. sermons on there. I post a lot of my travels. I travel four or five times a year all over the U.S., um, I do uh, what's called a coastal tour, where I've actually been, over the last three years, I've been traveling the um, the coasts of the entire United States, and I'm now up to Florida. I've got one little north, uh, Florida all the way up to the um, the Canadian border. That's my last two trips, two or three trips, however many I can, I can throw in in, a, in a, about a five-day trip. And so even just, I've, I've got a lot of different cameras, cameras in my car, camera that I take with me. I, I try to keep the you know, interesting and fresh. And what's neat is when you have that camera rolling and you're just, you forget about it, a lot of cool things are captured. A lot of very authentic things are captured. A lot of little silly things are captured. I'm a silly person. I'm about the silliest person I know. Um, when you make yourself laugh, it's, it's, it's both sad and silly. And so that happens a lot. <laughs> and so I try to allow people to see that that genuineness and even because then what what that does is it allows me to connect with people on a very base level because I've got my own struggles I've struggled with road rage and you know I don't think any of us that drives on these roads in America doesn't experience you mm -hmm. know somebody cutting in front of us or just being downright hostile for no reason and so it's even being able to be real in those kind of situations and saying, you know what, I'm just as real as you. I'm not perfect, but I'm moving in a direction um, through the power and the love of, of, of God. And Stephen, I just wanted to encourage you regarding your um, the content that you want to you want to share for your apologetics channel. I would encourage you to just use a free resource, even like blogger.com, which allows you to simply put out. Don't don't give yourself such a huge project that you can't digest it all, that you can't complete it all. Just begin to 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 post those little increments, and then maybe later on you can compile all of those things that you're that you're working on to a, a big bigger completed project. But right now, allow God to just release um, those things that He's put on your heart, that He's put on your mind, and allow that to be shared because you will be amazed. Because once that's on there, once you share your thoughts. It goes into the Google search engines, and as people are literally, people are trying to have questions answered by asking Google, um, "What do you do when your child dies? What do you do when your, um, you know, tragic things? If you're dealing with addictions, and if you have anything that's related, or you know, and you can kind of ask those questions and keep this real, your content may come and be of great value and great source of rescue." through the very things that God is doing in your life. So I'd encourage you, don't wait um, to, to start sharing what God is doing in your life. Right, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and John, I, I want to reiterate, uh, first of all, I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the financial end of what you were doing as well, because I think sometimes we, we're not living in God's economy. You know, it, it seems like in the church we can talk about it that way, but when it comes to, as you just said, the little things in life, the ups and downs and the ins and outs, we have to almost kind of fall back and regroup uh, every thought, you know, take it captive, cast the things down that aren't of God. But but you just said to Stephen something that I think is so important. What you have, get it out there. We've, we've shared it before about planting seed. And you can be throwing it all over the place, the Word of God, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be in a program specifically like when you're preaching or teaching, but, but it's such that it's a living word. It will always go forth and accomplish what God wills. And that's the one thing that, that again, knowing you for 16 years now, and, and we've been in and out and all about in so many different ways, but, but the, the diversity, as Jim talked about when we first started tonight, the diversity in unity is not always a diversity that we agree with each other. And it's not always a unity that we're together on every little thing, but we're together with God. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully we're together in ourselves with God 
to be obedient to whatever gift, talent, or ability it is and make ourselves available. And, and you know, every time that happens, God happens. Mm -hmm. and, I, and so I want to just encourage our listeners, those that are watching, to take as Moses with his staff. What do you have in your hand? Whatever it is, go with it. Let God use it. Make yourself available. And I think that whether it's your, your widow's might when it comes to finances or your gifts or your talents or your abilities, it's something that, again, you are a creative person. And so you can take nothing like, like a web page and put the content in there that is, is usable for anybody else out there so that they can get one thing out of it. And hopefully, as you said, whether they're hungry or thirsty, they're going to come back for more. Yeah. And, and what's great about that is those are um, conditions, a human, human condition that we don't have to worry about controlling because it's mm -hmm. like, I just ate 15 minutes before we went on, on air. And I know that probably by 5 a.m. tomorrow, I'm going to be hungry again. And so we can, we can build upon the very structures that God has put in place and um, uh, a good word in due season is like that cup of water. Mm -hmm. And if we will just begin to be those cup bearers and start, start within our own areas of influence, and we, we may not always be aware of the areas where we do have influence. And I can say this, if we're not aware, then we need to start taking authority because God is ready and willing to give us more and more areas of influence if we will take prayerfully and, and begin to take that ground. And I think that we need to do that. I mean, I do that within my, within the, the area that I work in, in my office and some of the, the, ex, the exterior offices. And it's amazing. The minute people find out that you're, that you're a believer, that you have something to offer. I've had people come in and sit down, sit down on my chair and just say, what do you think about this? Or, and boy, you, you, you let it, you let it known that you pray for people <laughs> and you will get people that will come and ask you to pray for them. And so there's, like you said, just take advantage of those opportunities all around you and don't wait or don't wait for that something special because you know, God, we are that something special that God wants to use. I mean, I, I need to throw something in there that just reiterates that but everybody, John and everybody uh, on our, on our website. And, and even I, think on some of the things we have going, I have this one testimony of this, this man, a uh, good friend of ours in Boswell, <clears throat> who does the uh, Friday night outreach at the, at the courthouse lawn on Friday nights during the summer. And uh, anyway, he has this little testimony that's on our website that's about a minute and a half long. He says, uh, you know, he, he gets this call from a guy in Florida. He's up on top of the bank building. They're working on some stuff. He's a contractor on some bus. And uh, he gets this call on his cell phone and says, yeah, Guy says, "Yeah, this is Steve from uh, from Fort. Got your number off your website, and, and he starts. He breaks down crying, and and so Jim, you know, he ministers to him a little bit, and uh, and he says, well, I says uh, before I get before I pray for you, uh, I want to help your faith a little bit.'" And the guy says, "Yeah, yeah," and he says, "I don't have a website." And the guy says, "Yeah, you do," and you hear him on, on clicking around there and trying to say, "It's gone." He said, you ready to pray? You know? And I mean, that to me, that, that that's really the thing that confirmed me to, to some of these things that we're working in right now. I had a little simple testimony. <laughs> but God to, to launch these things. I, I have this saying, God is greater than Google. <laughs> Amen. And God can handle this stuff. We get, our job is to get it out there. And, and, and he will, he will I, and I saw it as arrows. Uh, and we've been, you know, we have several prayers even in this community here that have been going on for several years. Barbara's part of one of them. And uh, I just, uh, I felt like it was birthed by prayer. But then that the Holy Spirit, through the prayer and the, and the work of the Holy Spirit, he's propelling the arrows. He's propelling, propel, pro, propelling <laughs> these arrows that are being launched into the hearts and minds of whoever needs to have these things. And I, I mean, that was just a great encouragement to me. And I, I, I just, I reiterate that because I hear, as I hear it, I'm encouraged by it. That God is greater than Google and he's doing this stuff. And we just need to, we just do our part, you know, don't we, Mark? We just, we just you walk know, the that we, You know, Grover, you mentioned Jim's, to... Jim's little segment there, Jim Ridgeway. And what's, what strikes me about that, not only what you said, 
but where he specifically <laughs> hope. It's almost like Steve the Vax, where it says he gave them Jesus. He didn't go into a whole uh, theology discussion on the book of Isaiah and the many Jesus. He gave them Jesus. So Jim says to this gentleman on the phone, he says, well, uh, you know, he was having trouble with his marriage and, and drug and alcohol issues and stuff like that. And Jim says, well, I have the ministry of reconciliation. And he said, are you ready to pray? And, and they did. Yeah. And so we need to understand that every believer, not only within the sound of my voice, but any believer out there on the planet has the ministry of reconciliation. And we need to believe that. And that's why when John brought up about the, the financial end of some of the things he's done, is that we need to believe God's economy. He is our healer. He is our provider. He is our restorer. And, and he has gifted us with the Holy Spirit that has some of these creative realities of the gifts, talents, and abilities that we've talked about, John and everybody in this room has. But each individual believer on the planet has a ministry of reconciliation. They have the Holy Spirit that God can do anything with at any time as long as you are open and honest Real. I, I remember working years ago with Mylon Lefevre, who uh, was part of a, a, a family group called the Lefevres, but he had a band called Broken Heart. And uh, one, of the, one of the songs that he, he did was, was, to be real is to have the Son of God as your Lord. The words of Jesus Christ can't be ignored. And that in and of itself is who are you in Christ Jesus? Read the book of Ephesians. It's not only behind John there, but that entire book is about who we are in Christ and who we should be, whether we feel like it, believe it, think it or not, because that's who we are in him. That's who he's called us. That's why we're here. And then we need to act on that truth and stand on that solid rock and watch God move. Amen, Mark. Uh, we're about out of time again. Barbara, do you have anything you want to add there right quick? Nope. Anybody else? Anybody else? John, would you give us the last word? If you had uh, to put it in two or three minutes, uh, that, um, summary, would you do that? And we'll go ahead and clock on out here and, and let everybody okay. join us if they can at a later time. Info at christianbody.net is how to contact us. Okay. Go ahead, John. You bet. Um, Thanks. Uh, first of all, I, I just thank you guys so much for um, allowing me to, to to just share and to just be a part of this community. Uh, I just uh, I wanted to encourage us all to to know that the things that we do um, are having world impacts. Um, the uh, the world is connected now. I mean, we're talking even to the most remote parts of South America. I mean, probably other than some uh, some indigenous. Mm -hmm people that live in the Amazon that don't want to be connected, um, the world is connected. And uh, for the most part, it's on people's mobile devices. And, uh, the, and, and not only that, you know, people in prisons, uh, they're listening to the, 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 the broadcasting and the programming that they can get. And so the words that we share, um, our words are powerful. Um, it's, it's not a, a mistake that, um, you know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And, and so there it's in, and why God chose words to be the agents of creation that brought all things into being. And so when we, uh, we need to allow God to use us and to use our words and to be caretakers of the things that we do say, because the enemy also wants to use our voice in a way that that's not going to build up, that's going to tear down. And it says that if a man can control his tongue, he can bridle his whole body as well. And really, he's saying, if, if you want to really know the secret on how to be able to do anything, it's to be the master of the things that come out of our mouths, because um, it's out of the, the heart that we speak, you know. And so we want to make sure that the things that we're revealing truly are the, the deep things of God that God has spoken to us. And so I just want to um, encourage uh, the listeners here to uh, listen to ChristianBody.net because you're going to get some, uh, some real substance of some people that don't have big flashy <laughs> budgets or cars or studios, but just people that are probably coming from your very same neighborhood and walks of life 
And I believe that this is only the beginning of what God is doing and what God is going to continue to do. So um, I, let me just close this in prayer, if that's all right. Yes, please. So, Father yes. God, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity to share, uh, to be real, to be live. And, Lord, our prayer for everybody listening here tonight is that they would simply do what they can do through you, Father God, that they would not shrink back because of any kind of sense of uh, – that I'm too weak or I'm not talented enough. Let the first step just begin and they will be so surprised and so amazed and to the glory of God where, where it will be that you will take them as that journey um, is, is walked out through their life. And we just pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.